To finish out our tour of the central nervous system, let's wrap things up with the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is um, kind of, in some ways, it's just the opposite of the brain. The spinal cord is composed of white matter around a gray matter core. I'll show you a picture on the next slide of that. And um, we're going to be seeing that there are sort of different components within that gray matter. There are going to be ventral and dorsal regions, and those are going to be responsible for different sorts of um, signals. So we're going to talk about ascending fibers and descending fibers, and those are literally, um, those names are literally indicating which direction signals are being sent. So some, some signals, like sensory information, they need to be transmitted in the upwards direction. So those would be transmitted through ascending tracts, ascending fiber tracts. Whereas um, if we decide to move our limbs, decide to activate some skeletal muscles, that's a signal that has to be carried in the downwards direction, from the brain down the spinal cord out to whatever region of the body. So that would be carried in descending fiber tracts. So let's take a look at some pictures to go along with this. The ascending tracts, we'll start with them on the left. The ascending tracts, these are going to carry sensory information from all different regions of the body. Um, so for example, down here at the bottom, at the bottom is shown a foot, let me get my laser pointer, right here is a foot, and there's some sort of sensory input, it's being tickled with a feather in this, in this schematic, uh, but that sensory input has to come from the foot, it would go up the leg, it would enter into the spinal cord, and specifically, it would enter in in the dorsal side of the spinal tract, so along the back, not, along the, not on the belly side, on the back side of the spinal cord. So that sensory input, um, sensory information is going to be carried upwards towards the brain. Eventually, the signal is going to cross over to the other side. In this case, it's labeled as happening in the medulla. That crossing over would either happen in the medulla or at some other location in the spinal cord. But in any case, by the time it enters the brain, um, it has crossed sides. It has crossed either from right to left or from left to right. So that decusation has happened. And then where would this signal arrive at? I'll give you a second to think about that. What section of the brain would this be um, Would this be showing up at? And you should be coming back to, oh yeah, what was it here? Uh, is it the precentral gyrus or is it the postcentral gyrus? It's the postcentral gyrus. So that um, one gyrus on the parietal lobe of the brain. Usually with the ascending tracts like this, there is a specific way that they tend to be named. Usually the name for an ascending tract starts with the prefix spino. I'll write this on the side, so, um, get my pen here. Spino. Um, so for example, we could talk about the spinothalamic tract, and what that's indicating is, for one, we're talking about an ascending tract, so the tract starts in the spinal cord, goes up to the brain, and then the first synapse would occur in the thalamus, if we're talking about the spinothalamic tract. So usually the name, spinothalamic, that's telling you two different things. Where is the, where is the tract coming from, and where is it heading? In the case of descending tracts, let's jump over here to the right side of the slide. Um, so with descending tracts, these are the tracts that carry motor information. So you make a decision to move a skeletal muscle and that signal has to get sent downwards, down the spinal cord, out to whatever muscle it is we're, we're talking about. So that's a descending tract. Usually with the naming for descending tracts, the name starts with the brain region that, um, that gives rise to the fibers and then it ends with the suffix spinal. So kind of the same idea, we're naming according to where things start and where they end. Um, so for descending tracts, we end the name with, with the suffix spinal, whoops. Spinal, so that indicates that we're talking about a descending tract. tract. Um, a good example of that is the lateral corticospinal tracts. They begin in the cerebral cortex and they descend the spinal cord.